In this video, I will show you how Elementor's new interface works and how you can use it to work fast. This new interface is probably going to be default on all Elementor websites in 2024, so we have to adapt and learn how to use it whether we like it or not. We can turn this interface on and off by going to the Elementor settings in WordPress, then clicking on features and there it is, Elementor top bar. If you like it, put it on active. If you don't like it, put it on inactive. In order to work fast, we first have to know where all of the most important features are because many of them have changed from position. In the old editor, adding new widgets can be found over here. In the new editor, it's this plus. The site setting icons is now one click away. In the old editor, it was two clicks away under the hamburger and then it was over here. The preview your changes, the save button and saved as draft went from this corner all the way up to the right upper corner. Preview changes is this eye, update is called publish and we still have this arrow for draft and save as a template. The navigator with all of our layers was on the bottom over here and it's now at the top. It still looks like a layers icon, but now it's called structure and it was called navigator. You can simply open and close it by clicking on this icon. Some of the things that in the old editor were hidden under the hamburger icon, like the theme builder and user preferences, can now be found under the logo. So if you click on the logo, now you can see those options over here. By the way, it has this really cool and smooth animation. The exit button, which takes you back to WordPress, is now called exit to WordPress, which makes more sense. It also has a WordPress icon, so that's definitely an improvement. And the notes feature over here, they added that on the top over here so that you can easily find it, which is the feedback tool you can use to work together with clients or your other designers or developers. Responsive mode settings, which turn on this bar, is now automatically turned on. You cannot turn it off, which is great because you always need to check your responsive no matter what page or template you're working on. So I really love it, one click less. And then lastly, the page settings were in the corner over here. Now they can be found over here, which makes sense because it's next to the page you are on. So this is the page you're on, these are the settings for this page. So yes, it will take some time to get used to the new positioning of the icons, but less clicks is always a good thing. It will speed up our workflow. So what are the features that can actually speed up your workflow? Let's take a look. The first one is a new one and that is recent pages. I am really happy with this one. We can now find the recent pages or templates we were working on and simply clicking on them to go to that template. It will first ask you to save your current changes if you made some and then it will open that new template. They even have a feature here that will let you add a new page. That is great, but it doesn't allow you to create any parts of the theme builder. So for that, you still have to go back. Speaking of going back to WordPress, we now have the finder over here. It's not hidden anymore under a shortcut. We can just click it and for example, then just type in theme builder and then open the theme builder from here and then it will bring you to the theme builder. And you can even use this for WordPress pages. So let's say you wanna go back to the dashboard, you just type in dash and there it is. Then you can choose to click on it to go there straight away or hold command on a Mac or control on a Windows, then click on it and then it will open a new tab which is great. So in this way, you can really easily open a few templates just from here, holding command or control, click, and then open the exact things you want. So for the people like me who actually like to work with a lot of tabs open, some people hate it. <laughs> This is a great feature. Click to add a new widget. You know that in Elementor, if you wanna drag in a new widget, sometimes it's a little bit buggy. It just keeps jumping around and you cannot get it in the place where you want. Well, that's not the case anymore because right now you can just click on a layer you want and then the next widget you add by just clicking over here will just be added under it. You don't have to drag anymore. So you can keep adding widgets like this just click on it and they will be added, which is faster and safer than to click and drag. And the last one, which I think you should know is the add to favorites feature. Let's say you forget the name of a widget, but you use it quite often. You can just right click add to favorites. And then when you scroll up, you have this new group over here with favorites, a pretty cool feature as well. Okay, let's now talk about customization. How can we change it up a little bit to make it even nicer? The first one is adding breakpoints. By default, you only have four breakpoints, desktop, tablet, and mobile. 
but you can add up to six breakpoints here if you want. You have to go back to the settings though of WordPress. So what you can do is you can go to search, then search for settings, go to general settings, go to features, scroll down to additional breakpoints and make sure that this one is on active. Make sure you save it. And then from here, you can go back by clicking comment E, which is the shortcut for the finder, going back to your homepage. So you don't have to go to pages and then find it. Open your homepage. Now go to the site settings, then click on layout, then scroll down. And here you have breakpoints. Now you can add more breakpoints. I already added the laptop, which is an extra one, but you also, for example, have tablet landscape and you have widescreen, which is even bigger than the desktop one. Then you can save the changes. It needs to reload. And now, as you can see, we have two extra breakpoints right here. I would highly recommend to always check the tablet landscape because tablet is not the most easy thing to make responsive. Sometimes things just wrap weird and then it looks weird. So make sure to always check that. So I would definitely recommend to check this on for every website because you want all your websites to look good, right? Panel width on the left over here can actually be extended by just clicking and dragging. If you didn't know, now you do. If you drag it really wide, you will have three widgets on a row, which means that you don't have to scroll that long before you reach the bottom. You can even make it wider and get it to four if you want to. So if you don't like scrolling too much, just leave it like like this and even if you go to another page then it will keep that width sometimes this is also nice when you're editing big text boxes because you just want a little bit more space to read your text than the very cramped default it is so that's definitely nice if it doesn't stay like this then you can lock it by going to elementor user preferences and then the panel width can be changed from here as well. And here in this panel, there are two more things you should know, and that is the dark mode. You can, if you want to, put Elementor on dark mode forever, if you like. If you have a modern laptop, which can detect whether it's day or night, then you can put it at auto, which then automatically turns it into dark mode during the evening. Unfortunately, the top part doesn't change. Then one will just stay black, but it looks kind of cool anyway, so it's fine. Speaking about colors, I have seen some people that have changed the default colors for the whole Elementor experience inside of Elementor. So right now it's pink, but not everybody likes the new pink color. We know Elementor's brand is pink, but everything is pink now. All of our editing handles, the save button, the widget outline, but changing this is not as easy as what I've shown in this video. It will require some custom code. So if you guys want me to make a video on how to do that, then please let me know in the comments because it will require me some testing. I hope you learned something. And if you're new to Elementor and you want to learn Elementor, you can sign up for my starters guide, which you can find on this page, which is a beginner's guide to Elementor. And if you're already a little bit more advanced, in Elementor and you want to level up your skills so your workflow becomes super nice and quick, then you can check out my Elementor Pro Mastery course, which will teach you everything I know about Elementor. It's a super fresh and new course. I will keep it up to date for two years. So even if Elementor makes changes, you're good to go. All the information about the course is on that page. So check it out if you want to. And then I hope to see you in my next video.